What's going on guys? Tyler here from Audioholics Anonymous and today I bring to you a review of Spirit Box's debut album Eternal Blue. Now this is an album that was hyped to hell and back. The singles came out and it blew people away. People were absolutely surprised by how good it was and they raved about it for a long time. And I only really jumped on the bandwagon when Hurt You came out as one of the singles. And Hurt You really surprised me, because I didn't really believe the hype. I usually don't buy into that sort of thing, either with music or movies or what have you. Uh, but this time around, I gotta admit, I was really, really uh, looking forward to this record. And then, like, the reviews came out and stuff, and people were like, This is a game changer. It's the best album of the year. Yada, yada, yada. And I just frankly didn't believe it. <laughs> I mean... Usually when things get hyped like this, it's not that good, you know, but I'm here to tell you that they were not exaggerating. This is legitimately one of the best albums of the year, and actually, like, it's a very close contender for my favorite so far. It's just a banger from front to back. So, uh, let's just get right into the vocals section. Courtney is a fantastic singer. She has a very unique style where she doesn't do a lot of belting, which is normally reminiscent of your rock style. You know, like, we're going up the rail! You know, that's not really how she sings. She's much more of, like, a Billie Eilish kind of minimalistic singer most of the time. And it really works. Her vocals are very sort of dreamlike and surreal, and they add a lot to the atmosphere of the music. But there's plenty of melodies and interesting things going on. And not to mention, when she's doing harsh vocals, they're fucking amazing. So, I absolutely adore the vocals on this record. And the lyricism is also very well done. So, for that reason, I'm going to give the vocals a 9.5 out of 10. Very high marks from me. Uh, Instrumental-wise, I really love Mike. He is such a good guitar player. Every single riff on this fucking album is, like, so fucking bouncy. Like, the intro to Hurt You you just want to fucking jump up and down and like give the horns when we get to like yellow jacket and that main riff kicks in it's just so fucking badass i love his guitar playing a lot of people joking by calling him mr bendy boy and <laughs> yeah he uses a lot of bends in his riffs and it just creates such a a really bouncy feel to the riffing and i absolutely enjoy it it's absolutely fantastic the drumming is on point the bass work is like actually underappreciated in my opinion i think the bass really adds a lot to this record and the atmosphere in general is is really quite tangible with this record which is always something i enjoy last year we had that with oceans of slumber and obviously we get that with a lot of opeth records and i really enjoy a good atmosphere in in my music Pink Floyd, and I feel like these guys are absolutely amazing at it. They do a great job on this record. Um, songwriting, composition, oh, I'm sorry, I give the instrumentals a 9 out of 10. Songwriting, composition, I give a 9.5 out of 10. Like I said, every song on this record is a fucking banger. Starts off with Sun Killer, which is uh, this, this really clean, until the very end anyway, a really clean, melodically interesting song, and then the end comes... And, and she's screaming at the very end, and it's like, fuck, that was a build-up, dude. And then immediately into Hurt You, which is a standout song. Yellow Jacket, which features Sam Carter from Architects. Again, a standout song. Completely badass. The Summit. Amazing song. One of my favorite songs on the record. Secret Garden, that was my favorite single. Phenomenal chorus. Silk in the Strings is actually my favorite song on the album. I love the chorus section specifically because the instrumentals create this really dark, dissonant sound uh, to the chorus. It's fantastic. Holy Roller is heavy and, and, and catchy as hell. Eternal Blue is the masterpiece of this album. Absolute glory. We Live in a Strange World could be a pop hit. It really could. Like, there's so much variety on this record. Uh, Halcyon is another really good, really good song in the same vein of like Eternal Blue. Circle With Me is again sort of uh, in the same vein as The Summit or Sun Killer. And then finally we end the, the album with Constance. This album from front to back is 
absolutely fantastic. There's not a single moment of filler here to speak of. Every song deserves its place on this record, and every song has a purpose on this record. The songwriting is so brilliant that the songs really feel interwoven. I, I said this was a big positive of the Between the Buried and Me album, that you would be listening to it and sometimes you wouldn't even realize a song changed because they were so perfectly interwoven together. There was very, very few moments of, of, of gaps between music. And that's kind of how I feel about this record too. I think this record does that in also a very fantastic way. So for that reason, 9.5 out of 10. And finally, for personal enjoyment, this is going to be a 10 out of 10 for me. Like, I loved this record. I've li the, the time I listened to it the first time when it came out, I listened to it three times back to back. Not because I had to, because I wanted to. I heard it the first time, I was like, well, that's going on again. And then I heard it the second time, I was like, well, that's going on again. And honestly, I wanted to listen to it again. But I had to get to sleep. <laughs> and the next day, I jammed it all fucking day. And I've been jamming it since. This is an absolutely fantastic fucking record. The only reason I took some stuff off here and there is... And I was waiting until the end to say this. I do feel that for as amazing as this record is, there isn't quite enough innovation. I feel like this album should have been a game changer. But there is some mysterious X Factor missing. This really isn't like all that different from Metalcore that you know. Granted, they have their own style, but it's not like they're doing anything new, if that makes sense. Which is a bit of a shame, because I feel like if they had added a little bit more of an innovative factor to the record, if they had been a little bit more unique, this could have been a perfect record. Like, seriously, this could have been an instant masterpiece, in my opinion. But I feel like I have to take a few points off, or really a half point off, just for the fact that it's not as original as I think it should be for the quality of music we have here. So, as a final verdict, I give this record a 9.5 out of 10. So, have you guys heard Eternal Blue? If not, fucking listen to it. But if you have heard it, tell me what you think about the album in the comments section below. Were you as blown away by it as I was, or did you think it was way overhyped? I'd really love to hear from you. But without further ado, I bid you adieu. Bye, guys.